now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, good to see you. I'm Alex, that's in red, and in yellow, the name of the show is The Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see underneath his picture, that is Albert Reynoso, and he is living down in Florida, and the reason I know him is that for at least nine years of my pathetic life, he was my producer at Sirius XM. Pathetic? Well, it's not. At the, at, at, well, I, I went back and looked at my life one night. I was lying there in bed trying to go to sleep and whatever, and uh, I came up with the uh, feeling that I've been pretty lucky. Oh, you think so, huh? Yeah. And, yeah. and the reason, let me take off the glasses because it makes me, well, actually hides the bags, doesn't it? I look younger. <laughs> anyway, um, I was looking, uh, the reason I felt lucky was I saw how long I had worked and how I'd gone from one thing to the other. And most of the jobs that I got in my career were all lucky. I don't think so. We had this conversation before. Lucky. It was lucky. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, I came to New York. No job. My friend Shecky said, come to New York. You're going to like it. There are people here who still remember you. So I decided I moved back to New York, and I moved in with my friend Steve. I was there for nine months. Uh, talk about a long stay, okay? That was the long, uh, And uh, I... Uh, I, I did my uh, my time there, and I worked for him, editing porn, porn commer- commercials for, for, you know, call services, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I was getting a little bit of a salary as well, and uh, finally they had to move, and I kept, the pu- but I kept bugging for maybe nine months, Sirius XM for a job, and they wanted me, but they couldn't afford it. Because that was when they were first starting up, all right. So finally, when how much did you ask for? Did you ask for the moon? No. In oh. fact, I eventually I took uh, one of the guys out to lunch, and uh, who who was the uh, head of our thing? Uh, Jay, somebody. No, that I, I, he was the really big head, but the other guy was big like guy, the yeah. head of talk. Mm-hmm. Um, they later fired him, and he went over to Howard. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Jeremy Coleman. Jeremy Coleman, and I went out with, with the regular lunch with Jeremy because I said, "Let me just take you out to lunch." And uh, we sat down, and he said, "So, uh, what, to what do I owe the pleasure of this?" I said, "Well, once again, I'm bugging you for a job, and you keep telling me you can't afford it. What if I told you I'll work for nothing?" And he said, "How does that work?" I said, "Just give me all the inventory of the commercials." which I'll probably never be able to sell because I'm not a salesman. So they, they, he said, okay, under those conditions, you're hired. And they gave mm-hmm. me a show. In fact, you were getting paid and I wasn't. <laughs> you know. And how, how come you didn't turn that inventory around? Because I... had one person who could have... Because I don't sell time. No, not you, somebody else. You put somebody else on your payroll... Well, you tell them to sell the time. I was there for three months. And one day I'm walking with this guy, Jay, uh, I can't remember his last name. Uh, Clark. Clark. We're going to the, I don't know, it's the uh, talkers convention. <clears throat> we're walking over there and he said to me, you know, we feel real guilty about the fact that we're not paying you, so we should pay you. Let's talk Monday. Or yeah. the... Uh, National Labor Relations Board said, um, is this guy getting paid to do this show? Because that wouldn't be legal. Well, payment. If he, does, pay, if he weren't. Payment in that situation was the ability to sell time on the show and get the proceeds of it. 
that's fair. They got to keep 20% of it was part of the deal. But anyway, so the following Monday, he comes in, he says, let's talk. And he said, uh, went to his office and he said, how much do you want? <laughs> and I said, I lowballed it because I didn't want to. I didn't want to scare them away. So I said seventy-five thousand a year, and he said, and this is exactly what he said: mm, too low. How about a hundred thousand a year? I said with raises every year, you know, based on cost of living. And I said, fine. Well, sure, you know. And all of a sudden, I was making a hundred thousand dollars a year, which was probably about ten cents less than you were making. But anyway, um, it uh, that's how I got back to work, you know. And and I consider that that wasn't as much luck as persistence. Yeah, that's not luck at all. Yeah, but I did make you the yourself wrong. I did make the commitment to move my entire life back to New York. That's not luck either. Well, no, but I did make that commitment. Yeah. You know. So. Did they take the commercial uh, inventory away from you when you when you started? Oh yeah, it? yeah, that was gone. Oh, of course, that, they that, that disappeared, right? Mm. You know, but for an outfit that said they couldn't afford me, to suddenly say, "Well, seventy five is too low. How about a <laughs> Have you ever had that happen when you went in for a job and they said, "How much do you want?" Uh, I I was offered more than I than I thought I would get several times. Yes, but you but you never had to state that price to them. I don't think I ever was asked how much do you want. I mean, if you said, let's I, I say, let's say, let's say, what you wanted, you figured you could get fifty. Let's just say, for sake of argument, and they didn't go ahead. I'd have, and, I'd have walked away. <laughs> they, <laughs> I'd have walked away at that. Thanks, thanks for coming to lunch. Have yeah. a good day. I, th I think the reason I'm no longer at Sirius XM is they got together and said. You know, Bennett's pretty cheap, but we can't afford Renault anymore, so let's fire both of them. I wasn't unaffordable. That's <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Compared uh, to some of the crap, that I they wasn't were either. On. I mean, I was making about one hundred twelve thousand by that time, hmm. and uh, that's not a lot of money if you're a big company. You know, not a lot of money compared to where you came from. No. Yeah, and but but and it was years before and it, that, and it was less than I had made when I was in San Francisco. Certainly, San Francisco, I was up around in actual pay from the station up around three hundred thousand, and then I also was able to make money off of doing live reads, which gave me another hundred thousand a year. Wow. So for yeah, San Francisco, the live reads are a great thing, and, yeah. and I know people who are doing live reads who didn't get a dime extra. I thought, why is that? I got fifty dollars. They're, they're giving you yeah. the opportunity to do a commercial for someone live, which is worth far more than doing having a recorded commercial, and they're not giving you any extra. You're the bonus on that. Yeah. You're the you're the reason. Oh, yeah. yeah, and they're probably getting more from the from the advertiser. Because you're doing live well, reads. Well, the only live reads I ever did at uh, Sirius XM. <clears throat> don't tell me. Don't tell me. Oh, Sirius XM. I, I, I don't remember. Don't you remember? Mm, no, I don't. It wasn't the teddy bear or the bike, was no, it? No, the teddy bear I did in San Francisco and sold more teddy yeah. bears than Howard Stern did nationally. Hmm. Uh, they loved me. They just loved me. No, it was the Flowers people. I, flowers, right. And well, then... What and was the name? Got the well, wait, that, that was, you remember the story? <laughs> I do remember. The I always story. I said to them, I, I will do a live spot for certain advertisers until I find out they don't live up to what they're supposed to live up to. Because if mm -hmm. I'm doing a live read, I'm putting my reputation on the line as well. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And so people get these flowers and they go, "That's crap, Bennett. I won't believe him anymore." Then my ability to do a live read and to sell stuff live so i always built my reputation that way was that if i say so it's there it's a good product so this was what was the name of the company 1-800 flowers i'm not going to say i'm not going to say that would be wrong to say that why there are a number of there are a number of uh, valentine and flower related well anyway companies. you had one of them which so as what they would send you if, if you were doing live reads was they would send you the product Right. All right. So they said, where do you want to send? I said, send it, to, send it to my home, send it in care of my wife, let her get the flowers. 
So she gets the flowers. We open them up. They're all dead. Not all of them, I'm sure. It was. The, you should have seen really? the bouquet. It was just crying for water or something, you know. And we put them in water, and they still didn't perk up. And I went back to the station that Monday, and I said, I can't do these reeds. These flowers are dead on arrival. I said, I, I don't want to cheat my audience that way. And, and the uh, advertising department was pissed at me because I wouldn't do a read yeah. for, their, for their flowers. But I just said, I can't, I can't tell my audience, hey, I got these flowers. They were terrific. No, they weren't. They were dead. Well, they didn't pay you extra for live reads over there, did they? No, no, no. So, well, so why and, do but that? I but I would have stopped anyway. In San Francisco, I found a couple of pr products that didn't live up to what they said, and I was getting paid fifty bucks a live read. Well, that's and what I you just said, be. and I just said, no, there, I've got if enough live reads. No good. You shouldn't endorse it. And also, a live read for me was considered gold. That's why they paid the fifty bucks yeah. extra, yeah. because they sold product. And, uh, and, and also because, I, and this is a thing I, I never was able to figure out, but the way in which I did some advertising, some live reads, well, it was by literally putting the product down. They said, you can't say it's a live read, you can't say that, I said, wait, okay? And because of the way I treated them, and because they never got mad at me, at least the public felt so, it gave them great credibility, mm -hmm. you know? Um, like I had, uh, what was it with the Vermont teddy bear? I think I came up with these, with, with, with a slogan. Um, the Vermont teddy bear, the best way to tell your wife, I'm sorry I had sex with your girlfriend. Wow. <laughs> you know, and, you know, and it's sold. It's sold. People love that. They love the fact that I kidded the advertiser. Well, but the guy who, who, uh, who ran the Vermont Teddy Bear Company. What a great he, guy. He was very smart, and he knew it doesn't matter what Alex says. People are going to listen to him. They know he's joking around when he says these things. They know that. So anything he says about my product is going to be good. Well, because he was, selling, he was selling hundreds and hundreds of bears every week because of right. my show. Right. And also, he was a sweet guy. He was like, if you imagine that Willy, guy, yeah. that Willy Wonka that. really existed, this was yeah. Willy Wonka. He was, mm -hmm. You met him? Many times, yeah. Sweet sure. guy. Yeah. He finally, nice he finally guy. And he would come in and give give stuff to everybody I had the radio I, station when he came. I literally had 50 Vermont teddy bears in my apartment. Mm -hmm. Every time I did a, another read, they would send me another bear. And then I'd have that many girlfriends, and I kept pawning, oh, here's something for you, and here's something for you, and here's something for you. And the bears never wilted or died. They so never was, wilted or died. They were a great bear. They were mm -hmm. the best bear. Any yeah. kid who got a Vermont teddy bear would fall in love with it immediately because they were created with love by this guy. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and you say you, you, you met up with him and you, you know. You did yeah, he, and he, then he did a bicycle company after. Well, after he bear. left that and sold it. He started a bicycle company, and it was a, sh a Chicago bicycle company or something like that. I did something like that, yeah, yeah, I remember. And it was a great bicycle. It was an old kind of um, like a Schwinn, you know, yeah, the old right. Schwinn It was bikes. a classic, classic style. Classic bike, style. Yeah. Very well made. And he sent it to me, and I, I rode it around. I, didn't, I wasn't that crazy about it because it wasn't the kind of bike I was used to riding. I was used to riding like English bikes and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, I I did do bicycling. I I bicycled all the way out to Fort Point under the Golden Gate Bridge and then back to my apartment every day. And you would talk and about I, it on, I, on on uh, on the show. Oh, I, I talk about it. I talk about. I say it's a great bike. It's a great classic bike. Uh, everybody will comment on how good looking it is. You know, it really, it was a good looking bike. You know, it was not a schlock, but it didn't. The company didn't go for some reason. That's a bigger ticket item than a teddy bear. Let's face it. Yeah, so. teddy bear is what you know, thirty five, forty dollars. It's a whole, it's a whole different kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, these bicycles, I think, at the time sold for five hundred dollars or something. You know. So anyway, not, certainly not more than that. I don't yeah. think at the time. So anyway, so uh, your trip back uh, from uh, San Francisco to. 
Florida was uneventful. It, 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 it was a great trip all around. I, I enjoyed uh, staying uh, at your place with you and your wife. Great, great time. We had uh, we we had enough time with you that we could uh, we could talk and we could spend some time. And I always like uh, spending spending the morning with your wife is great. <laughs> well, I I was saying that every morning I got up you and you were there was the morning I really enjoyed because that's when we did the most of our talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I realized I, 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 did, I was so caught up with my family, I, I wasn't even there to spend time with you on that three-hour journey you do every, uh, every night. Or how, how long is it? The, the two rat, hours, three two, nights a week? No, no it's like an that. hour and a half. Oh, an hour. This, sh- Whatever this, this is. is, and it's only really an hour because, like, I'm playing this on it right now. Oh, okay. Well, then what you should do is you should get rid of this thing and do one day a week and get an advertiser in that you can do live reads for mm. and you get you know very good idea but i'd rather Maybe talk not. to you for a half hour yeah well you don't have to do that whole hour and a half thing you don't have to do it give people little snippets and make it worthwhile and then you can sell the time see that's the great thing well i like our monday show I, I Monday really, show is a great show. Yeah, I, I unfortunately I can't I can't jump on every Monday. Yeah, but, but you do quite a bit. Once yeah. in a while, yeah. When I get the chance, I do. Yeah. But I don't. Sometimes I'm. What, are you, doing what have you else. got to do down there in Florida that's so goddamn important on a Monday at four o'clock? Well, you know, watching everything back up from the DVR. <laughs> I don't care what time it is. I got to catch up. Got to catch up with all the shows, do like you? Everybody else. <laughs> No, sometimes I'm at the gym at the time, you know, and I I often don't realize that it's Monday. I, I kind of lose track of the days. I, you know, I'm beginning to think that every morning when I wake up, it's Sunday. And why not? It, the it, only time I know when things are when when it's the weekend is when I turn on the TV and I flip past the uh, one of the uh, MSNBC or CNN and I see people I don't know and I think, okay, that must be the weekend. I don't know well, you see, people. you have that. I don't because what I've done is I put structure in my life. Yeah, what does that mean? <clears throat> well, I have to know when it's Wednesday because I'm doing the nighttime show on Thursday and Friday, and Monday I have to do the daytime show. So I know what Monday, Tuesday, what, you know, I know the days of the week. Uh, Marjorie a lot of times says to me, what day is this? You know, yeah. You know. What's wrong with that? And if I, well, days are all... How, what what can we call days? They're, I mean, they're all based on the uh, on the sun. They're all based on uh, the, the, the yearly clock that goes on. Mm-hmm. But we mm-hmm. really don't have to know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Here's an, it's another day. Yeah, not but, for me. I don't need to know it. But you don't need to know it. I do. But if I didn't do those shows, I wouldn't anymore. And I like that structure. I'm sorry. I like okay. structure. If you want it, then you got it. You know, you, Mr. Oh, yeah. Cynical, you don't want structure. Hey, it's Monday. What's a Monday? That's that's you. What's Tuesday? Tuesday is nothing. Thursday. Right. I, I don't really care for structure. I don't, you know, I, li- I like order, but I don't like doing the same thing every day. Did you ever go know. to TGIF parties? Like where everybody, TGIF? where you were working, had a little get together on Fridays before they went home for the weekend? You had a get together every day. When I was working in radio, when I started, people would say five o'clock. They said they point at you five o'clock. All right, I'm, that that means you'll be downstairs. There was a bar right downstairs from the office. We'd be down there five o'clock, going till seven easily, and and stumbling out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't need a TGIF. We had it every day. Best group of people. Okay, I, ever I watch a lot of. I'm going to change the subject here. You know, mine. Yeah. <clears throat> Because we've got, uh, what, yeah, we've got enough time, seven minutes or so. Uh, something that has been bothering me, and you're somewhat doing it there, mm-hmm. is podcasts <clears throat> where everybody has to show you their microphone. You know? I, I, I'm showing you my microphone? Well, it is down there, right in the edge. Yeah, I have a microphone. Otherwise, you couldn't hear me. No, no. I don't want to show it to you. I have a microphone, but where is it? Well, you know what? I didn't think about it, but if you'd prefer, I can do that. You see, because I like the idea that you don't see the microphone. 
Why? Because you're a professional and nobody else should have a microphone in there? Well, no, but they do it to show you they've got a microphone. Let me, let me show you the mic flag, too. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't lift this up only because it's rigidly attached. Get the mic, mic flag into the... I mean, I could lift it, but I've lifted it. it my mic is right here. So if I lift my finger, see, it's right there. But you never see a microphone on my show. Look at my mic fly. Do you still work at WPLJ? That's right. That's the original rock and roll mic flag right there. Really? Rock and roll, baby. I never really thought to roll. steal mic flags when I left the station. Eh, 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 eh. It wasn't stolen. The station was moving, and they got new mic flags, and these mic flags weren't being used anymore, so I got to take them. Oh. That's called, that's a mic flag. They call it a mic flag. Gift it to me. Right. That's yeah. a mic flag. You got to put that microphone right in front of your face like most of those guys do on podcasts. Yeah, right. See? I hey, hate, Alex, I how hate you doing? That. I hate that. I hate that. This I could I guess I I could <laughs> This is really this is really this is bad. <laughs> yeah. <You must> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Alex, how are you doing? What's going on? I'm not even I'm And everybody has things. those little little puffy things in the front of the mic. Why is that? That's to prevent plosives, which are the Do you hear plosives from me? Um no, I don't think Pretty I Pretty Polly had a party. Okay, do you hear any plosives there? No, I, but I don't have a windscreen. Won't. You have a pop filter on it. What do you have on your I mic? don't know. The, the mic came as a giant solid capsule. Let's see what it looks like. I'd, I would have to. Show you mine. Now show me yours. I would have to take this uh, off, and I this don't want to do it. It's got to go. Because I've got this whole thing that comes out here, and then press the mic right in front of me. So Okay, that's done. So to all you people who have podcasts, we don't want to see your goddamn microphone. Everybody owns the same microphone anyway. I don't agree with you. I don't agree. Why do you like to brag about your microphone? What kind of microphone is that? This is a. Um, uh, hold on a minute. <laughs> uh, you don't know what it is? No. It's a good one, though. I know that. It's a uh, PR PR forty. Made by who? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the. <laughs> It's a it's a good one though. Yeah, but it's impressive. It's impressive. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. It, Although the the, the 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 arm that it's on is very cheap. Everything else. Is I love cheap. the arm on this. I have the arm and the mic all in the same. It's an Elgato. Elgato. Yeah, that's I got a lot of Elgato stuff here. Yeah, yeah. the lights are Elgato what? lights. Never heard of it. Yeah, Elgato. El Elgato. Yeah. The cat? Yep. What? 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 They've been around that? for quite a while, and they're a very oh, no. successful company because they make really good quality products. Oh, the this is the screen here. Uh huh. That's an Elgato, Elgato too. Yeah. Okay. You you podcasters with your screens? Why well, you can't I don't like the podcast? No, I'm in my living room. God damn it! And it's nighttime. <laughs> uh, you're complaining about my mic when you have your phony background nonsense going on there well you know I that's, can't, a phony, that's a podcaster trick well i have one that i use um i have one that i use occasionally that uh, uh i use only for uh when i'm doing uh, uh lori because lori's outside right and the sun is shining in florida yeah and then to have me have a nighttime scene in back of me so here's the alternative for the day Oh, it's nice. Yes. But that's a different... Is that a, are you sitting in a different place? No, same exact no. place. Yeah, oh. look, see? If you, if you look on top here... Oh, wait a minute. There you go, see? There's, a, there's the... There's the well, that's the inside light, right. Yeah, yeah okay. it, basically it's the same. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. awful a little bit, but... But I'm doing night here, and even though the background on you is daytime, but... I can change it. I can also be in the TARDIS and Doctor Who. There we go. See? It's cheesy. That's it, it very is cheesy. cheesy. Or I can have a real space background there. Isn't that nice? Is that a space background? Is I don't know what, what that is, but I like it. It's pretty. Yeah, it's nice, but you're you're a little too bright when that's on. Yeah. I, I'm back in San Francisco. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that works all well and good. I blur. 
Well, you can't see that, but anyway, there's that. There's that. Oh, there we go. Northern Lights. Good one. Yeah, that's yeah, a good one. So, yeah, it's it's all it's all good, you know. But for you, I go to nighttime. I thought about doing day, but why do I get nighttime? We never do this at nighttime. I know. I know. I oh, should because you're running it at nighttime. Oh well, should I should I go? You want me to go back to the daytime? Whatever you feel best doing is I, what I, I want. I don't feel best doing anything, and in fact, I feel best. And by pull the screen down and show us the room. I love that room. Oh, okay. Well, we'll end our. We, it's time to end our little gathering here, so I can yeah. do that. See? See, I like that. You like that? I like, you real, like, I like the real room. Yes. You like the real room, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. That's Albert Reynoso. Uh, I'm glad to call him pal. I all my As best I friends are dead, so you're new, my newest best friend. You're, you're my. I'll take that. I'll you're take, take that. You're my best okay. friend. If that's if that's the torture you that's want. How that's how pathetic my mean. life is. You're my best friend. Exactly. Because exactly. all the other ones died off. Well, it's going to happen to me at some point, and yeah. I know you'll keep going after that. Who is it? Who is in line behind me? By the way. Nobody. Well, you better think about it because I'm I'm I don't think I'm long for this world. Really. No. Why? My, my, my family longevity is not really there. We, we go in the mid-70s, really? early mid-70s. Really? Hey, yeah. we're running way over time, but I don't okay. care because it's more time I don't have to spend doing the ramble. One day you won't do the ramble anymore. We'll just do this. We'll just do I was thinking of doing this and doing uh, Lori, doing my yeah. friend Chuck Farnham who worked with me in San Francisco, <laughs> and then putting them all together as one package that I put up on YouTube. And why not? You know, and maybe one other person that no, that I don't know or something. But I have to say, I'm sorry that I don't, you know, watch or listen to the uh, evening thing. But I just I don't I don't watch it. I don't I listen don't listen to it at all either. I just do it. But why? Because it gives me structure. I tried to explain that right. to you before, right. but you structure. won't listen to me. All right, structure. Okay, structure. You can just you can do this during the day and record them and play them. You know that way you don't have to be up in the middle of the night. You don't have to live like a vampire. Eh, I like I I like doing it. Okay. Okay. That's Albert Reynoso, ladies and gentlemen, is trying to convince me I should do nothing with my life because he's enjoying all. doing nothing with his life. Not at all. Yeah. Do plenty. Uh, I'm going out to get Japanese food now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go get your Japanese food. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and attractive Albert Reynoso, who is, of course, my best friend. Thank you, bestie. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Uh, yes, I always love having uh, Albert on, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have him on some more. I got to record more with him, uh, but anyway, how how are you? Good to see you. It's uh, it's uh, what it's Thursday. This is when nobody shows up for the program, so I just thought I would mention that just so you could you know feel my pain, okay? But uh, we have uh, we have um, uh, uh, are are letting a bunch of people on here who are our besties. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Huh? Got a whole bunch of people. Got uh, oh, you know, we got we got some people that we normally don't have. Let me uh, let me just show you to them or show them to you. That's what I mean. Mark Thorner, long time no see. Yes, Alex, happy to be here finally. Uh, what do you mean finally? What did you have you been away or what? No, I've just been just been busy with work. Yeah, with work, yep. and that's uh, taking photographs you're doing or well that that's my fun time not at work oh i see okay yeah Yeah. and he's down in florida and yeah like albert but i I think albert lives on the other side of the state i don't know where he lives exactly (laughs) you know it's all a mystery to me because it's such an such an ugly looking state it looks like a giant penis let's be honest about it and i nine is it i 90 i 95 well, that's on the Atlantic coast. On yeah, my coast, yeah, yeah. the pain is but, I-75. Well, this is like a giant vein going down the penis. 
okay? And then uh, I always said, I want to know what that venereal disease is that's floating off the end of it. Because it looks like somebody got gonorrhea. I, I have to admit, that's what that state looks like to me. And after living there, that's what it reminds me of. Okay? So. But anyway, that's Mark Thorner. And uh, uh, Charlie Wallace is here with us. Hello, hey, Charles. Charlie Wallace is here. Yeah. Rained out. Yeah. I don't know, but isn't there something else going on tonight that you'd be... Uh, Not really. Some, one team didn't show up. Moving off the end of it. Uh, oh wait a minute! We've got we've got Jeff coming on. Let let's wait till he can kill his uh, his uh, audio. No, let's talk a lot more about why Charlie's here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're happy. We'll see. What okay, happens what what? what wait a minute! There, it has some. Wait a minute! It has something to do with football, right? Yeah. One day, one day that cowboy sign in the background is going to be like in a hundred pieces. I think. <laughs> Almost got that today. You must have had him in a punt in the whole game. They did both teams just running up and down the field. No the second, Yeah, second quarter. But yeah, but the second quarter, they said Seattle only ran like seven wait plays. Minute, there was not a, wait a minute, hold on. There wasn't they a punt. two touchdowns, though. There w wasn't a punt in the whole game. Will I, be, dem will I be demonetized for that? <laughs> uh, you know, just just wondering. The game uh, over. And and Jeff's back. Oh, I don't know where Jeff's eight been. And a half minutes left. Hey, yeah, hi. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, so you're not paying attention to a football game tonight then, are you? Well, they're losing 35 to 30 in a game they're, they're, they're four, they should have won by 20 points. And what team is that, can I ask? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Oh, the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> They la last night was bad. So the Warriors had to beat the Kings by 12 points to make it in that tournament thing. They were up by 24. Mm -hmm. Then they end up getting into by 10. And then they were just hoping to win the game. And then at the very last shot, the Kings made the basket to win the game. They never had the lead uh, at all through the whole game. By the oh, way, right ladies on. and gentlemen, I don't care. Okay. And two guys got injured, really good players. Hi, hi Alex. How you doing? How you doing? Uh <laughs> I'm doing good. Yeah, let's change the subject. No, no, sports. no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, well, I have a sports Emmy. Two, of, uh, I have two, uh, two. <laughs> but one's let's see, um, one sports Emmy and one. Yeah, the other one isn't a sports Emmy. I have a sports Emmy, and uh, every now and then I have to do sports on this program. Otherwise, I have to give it back. It's the rule. So, I these guys do it for me. And sometimes when uh, when Josh is here, he aids in it, and so does Brian. So, do you care about sports, jo uh, 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 Mark? Mark? Whatever your name is. <laughs> uh, I'm a diehard Mets and New York Giants fan and a Knicks fan. Uh -huh. Enough said. Wow. You're a Mets fan because you were you were a Mets fan in New York, right? Damn right. I'm one of those people. No, even though I, I moved away, I am not adapting my home state. Oh, oh, but that's always yeah. the case. You know, no. that's always the case. You know, uh, people I know people who their team has left town and they keep that's still their favorite team. Uh, if I were them, I'd get pissed. <clears throat> you know. I was a Cowboys fan when I lived in mm. Chicago. Really? I bet you yeah. were popular. But was that was that because they're on TV all the time? They were on TV all the time, and they had Bullet Bob Hayes, and the, and they had Dandy Don Meredith, and it was just an exciting game to watch. But those yeah, names, my, it, my it, best it, friend, it, with those names, is like one inch away from being wrestling. <laughs> my best friend's a Cowboy fan, but he likes the Giants. He lives here. He likes the San Francisco Giants. He likes the Golden State Warriors. And hockey and the Sharks, but but he said, hey, I grew up in the 70s, you know, and the 70s on TV is only the Cowboys. So that's mm -hmm. that's the team he started liking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm, am I bored yet? I don't know. I, 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 you see, sports is not my big suit. Although I do like, I do like baseball, you know? Yeah. I, 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 but I like it as a, as, as a spectator. I, uh, there's nothing better than going out to a baseball park on a nice sunny day and uh, having a hot dog and, in my case, a soda and sitting there and being with friends and talking about stuff. And then every now and then something happens out in the field. 
And uh, and mm-hmm. nothing really. The game never gets exciting to like the last inning, because then in most cases that's the clutch, right? And I just liked it as a social event. I often thought it was a very nice game socially. Yeah, like. Uh, and very pastoral. I like the pastoral em- element in it. So you should go watch golf if you like the pasture. But no, I, th- that would be that's boring to me. Yeah, you know, it's a pasture pool. It, it's it's such a slow game. You know, <clears throat> I mean, um, I think and nobody w- ever gets hurt like they do in baseball. No, no, and and then I watch football. And people are breaking legs and ACLs, yeah. torn this and broken that, and mm-hmm. and I'm going, oh, Concussion. that that's a real healthy sport, you know. Get paid yeah. well for it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have any of my kids play football for sure. Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it, it's football. terrible. But they say it is, it's a car crash. Every play is a car crash. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you want me to bring up something that has pissed me off in the last couple oh, of days. This happens once a year here in New York, and it's a tradition, and everybody loves it. The tree. They go upstate to upstate New York, (laughs) and they find the most beautiful tree they can find, right? Yep. And what do they do to this really beautiful tree? It's maybe 100 years old. Cut it down. They cut it down and bring it down to Rockefeller Center, plunk it up there for about a month so people can go, ooh, ah, let's light it, ooh, ah. And then they turn it into mulch. Now, you know, come on. That tree has survived 100 years. Let it go a little longer. And I saw this one this year. It was next to somebody's house. And I guess they wanted to put up another driveway or something. I don't know. And and they tore this tree down. And when it was standing there, it looked so gorgeous. Yes, it was, I saw that too. Did you see it too? And it just pisses me off that what I mean yeah. in this these days of ecology and us caring about the environment, and then we go ooh ah at this tree that's been ripped out of the ground and plunked down in Rockefeller Center. It's natural environment, you know. So I got really pissed about that. And then they hold this big like two hour show on NBC lighting the tree. Like, uh, uh, this should be, uh, I, if I were old enough and I had a few more years, I would start a whole movement to try and stop them from chopping down trees and bring them down here to Rockefeller Center. Why don't you do what a lot of people do? Get a big aluminum one. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Get a big fake tree. We, we can make a fake tree. And you put that up and it, 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 people will know the difference between the fake tree and the real tree if you do it right. And the, the effect is the same, and then you just tear it down and use the same tree next year, right? You can even leave the ornaments on it, you know? So, anyway, that's my uh, that's yeah. my gripe for now, so. Mm. I, Did I say that the tree got blown over? Oh, that, that was down in Washington. That was the White House. That oh, was, that was at the White House. That was the national right. Christmas tree, yeah. and in a good representation of what our country's like right now, it blew over. <laughs> so, you know. How come they have national Christmas tree, but they don't have a national menorah? Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Don't they have a national menorah? They do have a they do have a menorah here in New York City. Giant, big, giant. Yeah, men- yeah Chabad uh, Chabad does that up there. Right, but it's in Central Park, I believe, right, or at the entrance to Central Park. You don't know. You don't know where your menorah is for crying out loud. I know where my menorah the, is. Yeah, it's right the, over there, Alex. The I, but if I remember correctly, and tell me if I'm right or wrong here, uh, uh, Mark. But the menorah is put up at the same time the Christmas tree goes up, and but that isn't the time you light your menorah <laughs> during the holidays, right? I always you thought. I always thought. Was, I always always thought they put up the menorah for all the Jews who said, well, "We don't like just having a Christmas tree up there." So they thought they put up a menorah. I always thought it was in at Christmas time. No, I never see it. Yeah, huh. but yeah, the 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 group of Jews, they're Orthodox Jews, the spinoff called Chabad. They yeah. they they put menorahs up in shopping centers and stuff, and some of us retired folks uh, go up and do protection details for these things. Well, you have to the go protect area. the menorah. Yes. No, to protect, 
No, to protect Nowadays, the Well, listen, yeah. if somebody goes in and let's say they vandalize a menorah, menorah, not menorah, concerned about men, the property. A menorah, no, and the they, they vandalize a menorah, you still got seven more days. That's right. <laughs> you know? So that's a Jewish joke, by the way. If you didn't get it, too bad. <laughs> you know? Yeah, the Jews on here didn't get it, did we? No. no. I got it. No. You, you, no. you got to see. I mean, well, Jeff gets all the, Jeff no. gets all the Jew jokes, okay? <laughs> and I don't try, I try not to pull too many Jewish jokes on this show because how many people are going to get them? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just if if if, uh, if if you were here every night, uh uh, uh Mark, I would uh, uh be more than happy <laughs> to Mark, tell Jew do- the jokes Chabad all the time. Movement? What? What? Mark, are you part of the Chabad movement? I do go to the services at the local one down here, yes. Yeah, we, we, we do protect... What the hell is the Chabad movement? I never heard of it. Chabad. Really? Chabad, yeah. They're Orthodox Jews, and uh, well, that, you don't have to dress up in a suit to go in. I can go in and uh, pull over shirt and denim. Well, they care uh, about what's uh, the, inside. The Orthodox you know. Jews, or as we Jews here in New York know them, the worst kind. No, this isn't like that, Alex. Oh, really? They're, they're not, not like, like they're not like. Uh... No, 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 really. No, it, 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 it's and and I'm friends with the rabbi, and he's a young guy. Oh, really? With a family, okay. And he's a really cool, nice guy. Well, you know guy. what I'm talking about? I'm talking about Hasidim. No, no, you're well. You're no. talking about the Satmars, which, oh my God, the guys, yeah. the guys out in Brooklyn. Well, Mo- yeah, there's yeah, yeah, it, but it's yeah. Yes. See the mm-hmm. only the, the three Jews here, or the I mean, well, the, we are, there are four Jews here. God, there are too many Jews on this show. Wow. We got to stop. That's why we don't get enough listeners. Mm. Um, 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 but but uh, I don't know about uh, our uh, good friend over here, uh, Alan. But I do know I can probably speak for Josh and Jeff. But these uh, these. Uh, uh, Hasidim, as as I like to call them, uh, I think we'll all agree are just a nasty bunch. You know, they go killing each other in the Diamond District. <laughs> you know. So the Chabad movement is Orthodox Jews that are a lot more laid back. Oh, okay, all right. And 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 we go because I never heard of the them. area, including Phil Meyer, go and protect the synagogues while people are inside praying or doing events or protect the lighting of the menorah, not the menorah, the people who yeah. care about the people. Yeah. In case of an active shooter or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's who I want protecting me, Phil Meyer. Anyway. He's, he's actually he's <laughs> actually a very, he would make a great bodyguard for you. Really? You guys can both walk with your canes down the street. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, no, he uh, doesn't walk with a cane, but I'm just teasing, so. Anyhow, but no, I, he's uh, he, he's he's uh, but, very yeah. aware. But Mark, am he's I the, right about the about the the uh, some of the heavy Jews out in Brooklyn? You know, um, like I said, there that one sect, right? That does have a lot of heavy connections to the Diamond District. Yeah, yes. they are a world unto themselves, and they yep. will throw us under the bus if the chance. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I'm on you know, the West Coast, and they'll throw us under the bus on the West Coast too. And there are yeah. no buses on the West Coast to, any longer. <laughs> you know, wow. Yeah. Go to San Francisco. They're all. Do they still have buses in San Francisco? Oh yeah, Muni. Muni yeah. still there. Uh-huh. Okay. But anyway, so that was one thing that was griping me, and I thought I would, uh, I would bring it up, <laughs> and. Uh, Yes, uh, yes. I, uh, the, the real burning question here all week long is, Brian, did you get a, no, a new McLaren that we were talking about last <laughs> night on the show a little bit? <laughs> uh, your mic is on. Don't try and fool us. Yeah. I listened to the show on the way to Lodi this morning. Did you buy, uh-huh. did you buy a new McLaren? <laughs> no, not yet. I mean, no. No, I did not. <laughs> Brian, come on, come on, yeah, Brian, yeah, come on, come on, come on down here to South at lunch. Right? Oh, that's all thinking we're going to drive a new one. What, Mark? This where I live is supercar central here in Florida. I've seen more McLarens in this area, <laughs> which which blows my mind because uh, as an enthusiast, 
it's it's like eye candy to me. It's like, oh wow, yeah. you know. Yeah, there, yeah. There's and there's a few over there. Maybe I'll have you go test drive one for me. <laughs> See how it is. He doesn't like his. His is all right. Well, uh, explain, old, so explain to me because I'm not. I'm really. I'm not totally aware of the McLarens. I've heard of them recently, primarily through you, but I haven't heard that much about them. Right, because Ferrari and Lamborghini have a big, ha long heritage. McLaren has a big racing heritage, and they came out with a car for a couple of years in the '90s. Now those are twenty million dollars, and I've actually started one of those, but. Um, and then they stopped production again for a while, and then 2012 they started production cars again. But wait they've minute, been in wait, wait a minute. A, a non-racing McLaren is worth 20 million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. The F1 and uh, one of the Warriors owners has one, and I went to his house in Woodside last year or two, and then uh, he let me get inside, and he told me the sequence how to start it up. So. Yeah. What do you well, mean? I got I, I mentioned this on the show last night. I know I heard. Car, I was standing next to the car last night, and I couldn't see myself getting in it or out of it without a crane. We that put was, the top down and try to tempt him, but he wouldn't get it. Uh, yeah. Well, now <laughs> wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Now, so you have one of the sports McLarens, right? Well, they're yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all sports. But why would the sports McLarens be cheaper than the than the? Uh, Call it the civilian McLaren. No, no, they're all civilian McLarens. But the the 1996 is the first production McLaren they did, only for a couple of years. Oh, I they see. They stopped production. production again until 2023. So, wow. So 20, 20, uh, 2012, and I have a 2013. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. That is just amazing. I, I, you know, I take it your car isn't 20 million dollars. No, I'd have different friends than calling this show. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you what happens. I, I mentioned this. <laughs> this joking, I, Alex. I, I, I mentioned this last night, and that is that the people I know who've really been into sports cars have all been people in the tech industry down in Silicon Valley. Yeah, it's like you go into a parking lot down there, and it looks like you know the history of sports cars. Yeah, and the. Uh, you know, I've had customs for all my life, and I met a lot of cool people there. But when you get into this kind of money, it's like the people you meet. I'm, I've, you know, I've met the one, one of the Warriors owners. I've met Joe Lakeham also from a Cars and Coffee thing. Yeah, uh, and then, and he's another Warriors owner. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I mean, the people that I met, the guy, one of the guys who started Dropbox. Mm -hmm. uh, like my friend who uh, I chat with all the time, he's like he's been in a couple of really big. He's in a head design position at Nike. Mm -hmm. All these things that the you know, these guys do, and and it's pretty quiet. It's not like people brag about what they do, mm -hmm. but then you find out, and it's like, whoa! They, this guy started Dropbox with his friend, and it's like, holy crap! You know, <laughs> it's like but, I mean, like when I worked uh, in 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 tech, okay, uh, the people who worked in it loved sports cars you know i was yeah. mentioning last night that my my friend got he had a partner in this company which was called play incorporated and the guy had a lamborghini and he decided he wanted to get rid of the lamborghini so he gave it to my friend paul it was a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar lamborghini Ooh. el diablo am i have i got it right diablo diablo, diablo yeah Oh my Which God. I again mentioned last night was the most uncomfortable car I have ever, ever, <laughs> you know, been in. Uh, uh, just a hard ride. Hmm. Uh, he did yeah, have a, <laughs> if, if Paul did have a Ferrari as well, which was his car that he bought, and um, that car was fine. That's a great little traveling car. You know, but once you get up to Lamborghini, I guess when you get up to maybe a million dollar car, like you talk about some of these McLarens are worth 20 million, I'll bet they're uncomfortable as hell. And somehow I think for that kind of money, you should get some, you know. I wouldn't, you know, I had a Ferrari, you know, a long time ago, and I wouldn't I wouldn't call it really comfortable. It was, it was comfortable to sit in. But you you feel the bumps in the road and stuff. It's not like being well, I didn't uh, I didn't find it as comfortable as say my car, which was a Nissan 300Z, or yeah. my Acura, which was like driving as I said, driving a living room everywhere. Right. Uh, uh, but 
I have to say <laughs> that uh, it was certainly more comfortable than the two hundred fifty thousand dollar car. <clears throat> Yeah, Lamborghini is really rough ride. I, uh, you know, when I, I was when I was in uh, I, was, I was in Lake Cuomo uh, in Italy on vacation, and uh, we're sitting. We had this uh, uh, room in this hotel where we had the, our own little uh, place out on the deck, and we were looking out, and there was this kind of party or some kind of festival going on or something, and all of a sudden, a hundred Ferraris drive by. It was like some kind of Ferrari festival. And there were, I swear, a hundred Ferraris went by, and most of them were red. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you could get, you could get Ferraris in yellow, right? You could get them in black, I believe. Mm -hmm. But most people just wanted them in red because that was a special red color, if I'm not mistaken. So, Ferrari red. And they do, they do a lot of those celebrations over in Italy, but yeah. I see, you know, Facebook has a lot. They don't have a lot of McLarens in Italy. They have them in England where they're real mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what yeah. kind of a car do you drive, um, uh, Alan? Now? Mm. <laughs> you want to see it? I got pictures of yeah, it. Brian's got pictures of it. Uh, uh, an Econoline van. It's got a bedroom in the back in that. What do, I, what do you, what I do you say do? it's for camping. What do you do with it? Deliver linen or something with this damn thing? Oh, uh, no. you, you ever see the Dahmer story? You know, the white van. He <laughs> parties in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, yeah I mean, I God. Suppose it's got a bedroom in the back. Will you figure it out? Oh, God. There, there's the van. Yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, so, uh, hello, kids. You want some candy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, you know, I'm gonna find out what people drive because I don't have a car. What do you have a car, Charlie? Oh, yeah, I've so. got a 2024 Chevy Trax SUV. Oh, oh, really? Mm -hmm. I, that, yep. That's nice. That's, uh, that's Steve Fox's car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 72 Chevelle. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right when we ate lunch together. Well, it went, uh, then th I'm yeah. glad you all have these cars because if I come out to California, one of you is going to have to pick me up at the airport. Okay. <laughs> I, you, I will pick you up. And yeah. if it's only you, we'll take the McLaren all weekend. And if it's you and Marjorie, we'll take the Cadillac all weekend. So oh, don't really? worry about that. Yeah, all right. Just yeah. get here. I promise I will. T I have. And if we're not happy out. with either of those cars, you'll just drive into the first uh car lot we can find and you'll well, pick we'll up some alan's <laughs> van they got a couch in there if you get tired <laughs> <laughs> do you really have a couch in there yeah. <laughs> oh you know the side the side you know from the van you know the side door you open yeah. and it's a bed from there all the way yeah. back it, it's yeah. a queen size bed in there that you can sit on yeah i it's didn't ask any questions underneath. after that and, and the good thing about it, when I used it for camping, one of the good things is if it's cold it. outside, you don't have to get out. It's got a portable toilet in there. Um, what, what, what kind of trailer trash are like you? Like Silence of the Lamb, <laughs> doing a Jody Foster movie. I'm scared. Yeah, I'm the yeah, best you know, trailer I, trash. Alan, how long have you had the van? It's uh, since 2009. Yeah. Okay, because I was going to say this. Because like after 9-11, I think they took all the white vans. They had to have markings on them. No, seriously, like like the really? yeah, because uh, because they wanted to have markings on them. Even like my friend, that was a gardener down the street, and he had a white van, a white U-Haul, the old U-Hauls, and he painted all white. And they they came over to him after 9-11. They say, yeah, you have to put your gardening, you know, whatever information on there. Yeah, they're requiring it. So yeah. So in, in well, Fremont, sure they, they, they have they have, they have yeah. signed it. In right. Fremont, they have signs on their white van. The city does. It says police department on them. Yeah. They use them for paddy wagons. Well, let me ask uh, Let me ask Jeff. Jeff, what do you drive? Well, I don't drive anymore at all. Well, uh, what, okay. What's the family okay. car? But uh, the <laughs> car I have is a uh, Prius. Hmm, Japanese car. Okay. We, Kobe. Then, what? Yeah. I thought you Honda. had a Prius. Honda, okay, yeah. Yeah. C R V. Yeah. Oh yeah. C R V. Yeah. Uh, yeah. CRV. CRV, they're not those are nice. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a good car. Really nice. Last yeah. forever. Uh, did I ask you, Mark, what your car was? I have a twenty seventeen Prius. Oh good. Oh my god, I yell at you guys all the time. <laughs> Why? Yeah, yeah. well, oh, guess what, pal? You, you live out in California, <laughs> right? <laughs> 
You were back in the Lodi on the freeway when you, you know, Ultimate Path, the Altamont Pass, you know, going up the hill and down. Mm -hmm. And there's always a Prius in the fast lane. I don't know why. Okay. How much is gas out in California now, guys? I know, I know, I know, I know. Who pays attention? 239 a gallon. Who pays attention? You just buy it and use it. Uh, and your, your Prius is a, I suppose, a hybrid, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, awesome. yeah, but don't, don't listen. Don't go yes like that to me. I don't know the first thing about cars. Okay, I'm just taking a wild stab here. Be kind to me, Mark. Put you this way, I drove my old. Yes, one of course, a Prius is a hybrid. Yeah, well, I think I knew that, but I was saying it questioningly because I might be wrong. Okay, so I was right. Okay. Yeah. It's a, yeah. What I, kind of mileage do you get? Forty-five. Mm -hmm. How about you um, on that uh, that uh, big car you got? The uh... Uh, twenty-three. <laughs> <laughs> twenty-three. But 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 that's like the best supercar because the other ones are like ten and eleven. But they uh, McLaren did that with their motor, so then they can uh, you don't have to pay the luxury tax. You have to have twenty miles pro. You get better mileage than I get. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, driving yeah, my van down the road is like driving a brick wall down the road. <laughs> Well, now you also you also have a um, um, <laughs> watch this question. You also have a, te a Tesla, right? Um, my partner does. Your partner has a Tesla. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you have a Tesla in the family. Let's say. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many miles to the gallon does it get? <laughs> It's all no electric. miles to the gallon. It's 100% electric. Yes. <laughs> well, you know what I, you know, the thing that's always bothered me about the, about, uh, I would love to, if I got an automobile, but who's going to get one at my age? Uh, I have a license. Don't worry, I can drive. My mother's 90. She has a new, a new Honda. But I thought about, you know, I'd get a Tesla. But to begin with, where am I going to, where am I going to plug it in? I'm in this ap apartment house. You know, and and you know, and then if I go to some uh, some place uh, by, nearby a garage that maybe has some place I could plug it in, uh, they probably charge me extra for plugging it in because I'm using electricity at Con Ed rates. All right, so um, I uh, none of these things really seem to appeal to me. Uh, uh, it would not be I would not be able to do it here in New York. But if I bought a car, uh, my problem is I would always be tense because I would go, am I going to run out of electricity before I get to my destination? You know, at least if I know I've got some gas in there, like with a Prius, I know I'm going to be able to get to my destination as long as the gas tank is, you know, looks somewhat full. <laughs> uh, but the point is that I saw a thing today that they've come up with a whole new thing, and it's a electric highway. And what it is, they put batter, they put like I don't know, batteries or something in the pavement, and you just drive down the middle of the road. It did. You drive over these these dots in the road, and every time you hit one, it charges your car. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, but, it, it's our toys. Yeah. Huh? It's our toys coming to life. When I was a kid, Alex. Mm -hmm. There was a, you know, those slot car races. Yes, that yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Rollers, you know, AMXs. Yeah. There was a very expensive one that did just that. It was a track where you could drive. You didn't have a slot, but the power came from the whole track. And the other thing is what, what these electric cars are reminding me of, maybe some of the people remember a toy from Ideal called mm -hmm. Motorific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Motorific. Did it have a track? Had a chassis. You put batteries. You put an electric motor in, and you change the body. You mm -hmm. wanted to have a Dodge Charger. You bought the Dodge Charger. Boom. We have the technology, though, Mark. Yeah, but that's, Ma but that's maglev. Maglev. Yeah. Well, well, no, maglev's that, a whole different. No, maglev's a whole different thing. Great. Maglevs work on trains best. Yeah, but it yeah. worked well. We haven't developed it no. for cars. But I don't know. I don't know cars. if you could develop it for cars because. It, it, it maglev has to be uh, on a track of some sort. Yeah, uh, yeah but what's where, the whereas same track as cars, ca cars 
don't want to go on tracks. That's not no, what a car say, does. The, 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 no, but the I, maglev is basically a track, and as you go along, it's pulling you and then it's pushing you. It's pulling you yeah. and then it's pushing you. But you can't do that unless you've got a track on the highway. Don't so go they, no. I mean, I know yeah, what a maglev I, I, is. I, I, yeah, but, you know, aircraft carriers nowadays don't use traditional uh, yeah. steam-powered catapults brian they have electric in the in the in the deck of the of the of the uh the ship and they shoot the plane off with yes but you don't have those on highways and those are ropes and those are pulleys not anymore or cables go, and pulleys go look at the new ones the new ones are have a the, on the wheels they have the thing that that rides up a little bit above the track and it's magnetic levitation that throws the aircraft off the aircraft. Well, I carrier. disagree with you. This would work in cars, but you know that's okay. What do you oh. know? <laughs> anyway, yeah, so they, you know, yes, right. yes, 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 Brian. They they do have a F. It's a Formula One racing, but it's electric. And I saw it like last summer. Mm -hmm. And they it's really weird because they have like a, a corner, and they have it in green, like the outside track. You know, if, as you're going around the corner, if you take the outside lane, it's like striped green. And when they go over that, they get a boost of energy on their battery. Oh, really? And it's weird yeah. because it, the race is totally quiet. And you just hear you just hear whinings of the motors. That must not know? be fun for you, for you car fans, to not hear no, any I, I, sound at I all. I can't last like five minutes. I'd be tortured. Like, I'd tell the secrets but to the coach. I hear they're putting the speakers that. up and making the sound of race cars on that track. Mm. Uh, I can't yeah. find it here, but there's a, some kind of e-racing or something. What was it so I Alex, heard? Alex, you had said that you wouldn't have a place to charge your car. Next time you go for a walk in New York, look around. I'll bet you'll see 20 or 30 places to charge electric cars on no. your walk. Uh -uh. They're all no. over the well, place. Well, I don't see them anywhere. We, we don't looking. have any gas stations looking. in my neighborhood. Come on. Oh, okay. Well, you really don't really keep getting held it's up. the truth, Alan. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Am I am I right, Mark? Mark that that. Yeah, but I bet they have charging stations in your neighborhood. No, they don't. They, I, I don't think they have many Teslas. I mean, do you guys have a lot of Teslas there in New York? I, you do not see as many Teslas in New York. The only time I ever really saw a Tesla was one time a, uh, uh, um, um, a Lyft car picked me up or Uber. I don't know. It was one or the other. And it was a, it was I, uh, I suddenly realized I was in a Tesla, because it had like you know the big uh, iPad. Well, they're also very quiet. Yeah, that big dashboard, like yeah. Yeah. They run quiet too. I had one take me to the doctor one time, and I didn't know it was an electric car, but the whole dashboard looked like it was all like computerized. You know what I noticed, Alex? It was very quiet. The car. Of course. It didn't make much noise. Uh, yeah. Yeah, electric motor. Well, it's, electric. Electric. it's electric. I think that when I, if you bought, just bought one, it would be disconcerting for a little while that you didn't have the sound of an engine, because yeah, when, when you turn on a yeah. car, when you you know, or you press a button now on a car, when you start a car, mm -hmm. you're used to hearing a certain amount of revving uh, that gives you the idea that it's turned on, but you don't know whether it's turned on or not. You just assume that it is. Because I guess certain things light up, right? Is that what happens in the Tesla? I think so. Yeah. I know there's a charging station by my bank. They have charging stations. And also what's great about the Tesla now is you turn it on and a little sound from the back of you goes, I hate Jews. So it's really... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's called Formula E. So I just, just looked up Tesla with your zip code, Alex. Yeah. There's, there, there's 2,400 charging stations in your zip really? code. Really? Where? Where? I don't uh -huh. know. I, it didn't tell me where. It just told me because of where Harlem. in New York City or in no uh, in, in 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 Harlem. In really? Harlem, there are twenty four hundred. Well, I used your zip. Like I used your zip code. I could see Popeyes where you live, and I don't need to broadcast that. But you know, although everybody they may be it. including that you could go beyond our our, our zip code. Yeah. It's in the I, area. I don't know. I don't because I quite frankly I don't see anything like that. Okay, well, and I have yet to looking. I can't remember the last time I saw a Tesla driving around in Manhattan. No, well, you I, see Teslas here all over. Oh you yeah, see all over the place. Teslas in a row. I mean, they're they're 
I don't know what percentage here in the Bay Area. Somebody but said one more. of every seven cars or something in California. It, it's got to be Tesla. at least. And then sometimes yeah. I'm in the com- going home and then commuter lane, you see like 10 of them go by. It's just it's But you crazy. see, it's practical for you because you have charging stations all over the place, right? They have one, we have one, and they have one. And you can then, you also, you live in a house. And so you just Having install house, yeah, one of those install. fast chargers in there. And so you come home at night and plug it in. It's probably good for a whole day, right? How many mi- how many miles to the charge do you mm-hmm. get? Uh, it's well, three hundred and something. Yeah, what three hundred? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah. three hundred and twenty something. My neighbor's got a Model and, S. And, and the same the the ones that most houses use are the same ones that you use in the dryer. You know, the big round one, with the three thingies. I, I wonder what your electric bill will be. That bright is it? Is it expensive to charge that? No, the electric. Bill. Can you can you name oh. all the alphabet? I mean, yeah. Can you name all the alphabet numbers for Teslas? Yes, X E X Y. Yeah, yeah. Spells yeah. out well, sexy. Get, uh, what, 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 what are the three of them, Alex? No, four. Uh, four is it? Four S E X Y. Yeah, first he had the Model S, then the Model Three, which is the E backwards, then the okay. X and the Y. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And My the most expensive. Funny. The most. He's funny in some things. What the most expensive mm-hmm. one is? Which? Yes. The model Y. I don't. Oh no! There's a plaid version that's oh, the plaid, uh, that has yeah. like three or four motors, and it's like, uh, yeah, it's really fast. The X-wing ones are pretty expensive. I guess. Yeah. What do you mean the X-wing? Uh, they open up yeah. kind of like a DeLorean, you know, the, well, the, the doors uh, back doors. Don't they all open that way at Tesla? No, 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 the Ys don't. No. Ours doesn't. Okay. Neither do the S's. Right. Oh, neighbor's okay. got, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Neighbors you're got right. two S's, and uh, you know they're hundred and quarter a piece. Well, listen, tell me something. As long as we're talking cars tonight, which I like because it's better than talking about all the other crap that's going like on. Like sports. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, but we do have to talk about your 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 judge. Go ahead. Go ahead. Though. About my judge. Yeah. My yeah. judge. Yeah. I heard uh, Trump is uh, going after your judge's wife now. His wife now. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. Oh boy. In Did case Mark doesn't know, case, in case I Mark think. doesn't know, my judge in my case with the landlords and stuff and with the guy who rented us his place, yeah. our judge is Trump's judge in Garin. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. The one that's going after Trump. Yeah, that's why I figured. Yeah. You should send him yeah. a Christmas card. <laughs> I and I have to go back in front of him. Well, I'm not gonna go tell you the truth. Okay. I don't have to go. On the twenty yeah. second of the month, because we got a big fight with the guy that we got the apartment from. You know, it's just it just never, the problem never stops. Okay, but uh, uh, yeah, the wife of the New York judge overseeing former Trump, former President Trump's ongoing civil fraud civil fraud yeah, that'd be, trial. That'd be Arthur and Garin. Yeah, yeah. The the latest target of Trump's rage online. Oh, really? Yeah, now, this guy must have ate a lot of paint chips when he was a kid. <laughs> Trump. I, I mean, why I is this guy well, what did he say about God. her online? Is, I don't know. Does it say? Well, let me see. I'm going to Google it for you. Hold on. Let's see if we can do Google. It. Wow. You know. I mean, I heard I mean, that this that, is not a jury trial. The judge is going to make the yeah, sole uh, decision. Uh, uh, yeah, that's this, where and yeah. he's pissing off the judge. Yeah, well, and the ju- well, he's trying to piss off the judge yeah. because he's hoping the judge will make some kind of judicial mistake because he's mad at Trump. And not this I got to tell you, this guy's cool and calm. Okay, yeah. he is really cool and very calm. I think and I might add, a decent guy, no matter how he, you know. He, he didn't necessarily. He kind of ruled in our favor, but he didn't. We weren't around when he finally made the ruling uh, that brought the the uh, rent down here to a ridiculous price. But and he doesn't take crap from anybody in his courtroom. So you know, you're you're Trump. You want to win your case? Yes, sir. No, sir. Well, sir, this is what I felt happened. You know, and blah 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 blah. And yes, I've got a social media, but I'm not going to write about you. And you just, because he's the judge, he's the guy that's going to make the decision. Because his lawyers forgot to fill out the forms that said, we want a jury trial. Then it wouldn't have been like this. The judge would have just been a mediator there who was, you know, mediating what was going on and not necessarily making the final judgment. But because he had that ability in the very beginning, he made a summary judgment. 
can't they? I, I'm sure. I'm sure by now Trump is wearing an ankle bracelet to monitor him. Can't somebody send a volt? You know, some voltage through well, it. Well, actually, up? actually, and and Melania is wearing an ankle charm bracelet, so it's uh, yeah. really. Uh, uh, but I don't uh, think hers is battery powered or GPS monitored. I, I don't know what you know. It, Trump feels. I think that he's going to get the whole case thrown out because he's going to so piss off the judge. The judge will finally go off on him, and the judge isn't going off on him. He's just simply saying, "Oh, I told you, you couldn't say anything about my family or my." Uh, my assistant, uh, who again is a very nice person, I might add, uh, because she was on our trial with us, uh, and uh, she is simply she's she's a lawyer who really gives her opinion to him about legal matters, and that's why he's constantly ref listening to her to find out her her take on particular, you know, legal matters, and uh, he put her down. And uh, that's what cost him like fifteen thousand dollars so far. And just keep opening your mouth, Donald. You know, before he's you know. A billionaire, it's, come on, he's got that. In no, his uh, no, no. Ah, I'm, I'm saying that once he gets up to twenty thousand, he's going to be broke. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> he's got plenty of Republicans that are sending him money every day. And, well, they're the stupidest <laughs> people in the world that I can think of. Yeah, Bill. Huh? Meyer. I don't think he's sending it. Yeah, Bill. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, come on. I mean, there are people that do this sort of thing, and I don't know what they see. You know, I don't know how anybody could be on his side now, even if you are a Trump fan, because by now you should say, eh, you know, we've had a little too much drama here. Let's get behind somebody who has a little less drama going for them, mm -hmm. like Marjorie Taylor Greene, for instance, you know. Uh, he really could oh. shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue, and they'd still follow him. Yep. Oh, yeah. He said that. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they want to prove him right, too. I but I think he's actually going nuts, if you want my opinion, from everything I've been able to oh, see he's recently. Been nuts. Huh? Yeah, but he, I mean, really, really, really nuts, though. Again, his, uh, his hero and his, the guy who taught him everything he knows about this sort of thing was, uh, what's his name? From you know, McCarthy. Roy Cohn. Roy Cohn. Uh, and, and, uh, Roy Cohn was a terrible human being. I was telling Marjorie, you know, and I've mentioned it many times, that I did a debate with him over at the WOR on the Barry Farber show, and Barry wanted me to come on and debate Roy Cohn. And I went on, and there was Cohn, and at one point I said to him, I said, how do you feel about the fact that you got the uh, Rosenbergs executed? You know, And he looked at me straight in the face with the, the deadest eyes I've ever seen in my life. I mean, they were just, they were like, just, oh, it was scary. And he said, I sleep very well at night. And I just said to myself, you know, I don't think I'm ever going to meet the devil, but if I do, he's probably going to look just like this. <laughs> you know, it was the evil, most wow. evil person I've ever met or mm. even talk to in my life. Just amazing. Just amazing. But at least I had that experience, so <laughs> you know, I can now tell the story here. But mm. I mean, amazing. Just amazing. He's dead, right? Hmm? Yeah. He oh, died, AIDS. Died, died of AIDS. Life. Died of AIDS. A guy he who all his life, life had vilified gays. Yeah. There's a very good show right now on uh, Showtime, although if you're straight, it's harder to watch than if you're gay. And it's called Fellow Travelers. And mm -hmm. it's about being gay back in the 50s. It takes place in two mm -hmm. time zone mm -hmm. places, in the 50s and then again in, uh, in 1985. And it's about two gay people, uh, two gay guys who fall in love with each other. And their relationship as being in Washington, working for the government, and being gay at the same time that McCarthy and uh, Roy Cohn were doing their stuff. And uh, they have somebody playing McCarthy, somebody playing Roy Cohn. Yeah. So that's part of the plot. Part of the plot is also gay and having to hide it in those days. And mm -hmm. you couldn't come out of the closet. And you had to be very careful how you did what you did. And uh, it's really... Uh, I. I'm finding it very interesting, you know. 
and uh, it has a lot of sex scenes between guys in it, but the only thing that bothers me about that is it also bothers me when I see a, some kind of show where the couple on the show are all having sex a lot on the show, and I'm going, the plot is not being advanced while they're making love. Right. And I want plot. I want the plot to advance. At that point, they they have to be making love for a reason. Uh, the 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 way in which they're making love has to play into the plot. Here it's just okay. Two guys boning and moaning, you know. And now it's back to the story. And the yeah, story, but, the it, story like but it happens on. to be an interesting show because. Uh, and then there's even the uh, AIDS period where one of them gets AIDS, and it's it's like this many-sided coin of stories going on here. Uh, and, it, you know, one of them is, uh, is, uh, McCar is McCarthy. The other one is being gay in that period of time. The other one is the whole AIDS crisis. Uh, there's even a racial side story going on, you know. Uh, and it's, so uh, it, if, it, 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 it's an interesting show if you get to see it. And, you know, I was gonna, what, Alex? I was going to say, I, and I, I know Tony the, will love the male love scenes. I think he'll. I was going to say that on a side note. <laughs> on a side note, I read the biography. I took it out of the library on Cohen. Do you know his father was a was a Democrat? He was Democratic. Oh yeah, his family were Democrats. Yeah. Yeah, I think the mother really turned him pretty much. He had hatred for the father, Alex. I don't. I never understood that. Was there you know, something? There? You know, Tony, Donald yeah. Trump, most of his adult life. Was a Democrat. Yep. I don't know. You donated to Hillary Clinton. I think he's, I think he's an opportunist. No, 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 no. Trump was a Democrat when it was expedient. Expedient. Convenient. Yeah. yeah. To be uh, a, a Democrat. Uh, I, I can see that. Uh, you know, there was nothing that made him become a Republican. There were, you see, I mean, you, what you're what you're trying to put, uh, put in here is an element of the of an idea. That, that Trump has any politics at all? I don't no, think he no. does. And I don't. He's, he only has the politics of a, Trump. He had a crime of opportunity to become president, and it just so happened that the side that he wanted that he was Republican. Yeah, he's not a Republican. Yeah, mm. aren't you so glad you don't live up here and have to put up? With hey, come on back up, Mark. Visit. Mark? Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, he's down there with DeSantis. Okay. Oh, he's got DeSantis. Oh, That's okay. right, Alex. That's yeah, almost yeah. better. Oh. God, don't don't please. How don't, is he doing? Hey, we, if you if you ever meet up with DeSantis down there, will you tell him <laughs> the boots are not a good look? Yeah, You're right. He dresses oh, horrible. I dress terrible. That's so bad. What? Uh, wait, 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 let, let, let Mark no. settle down a second and come okay. out with what he wants He's to not, say. Here. Up <clears throat> this, this guy is the definition of tits on a bull. Useless. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I've, I've seen useless politicians, but the fact that the masses flock to this guy, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm like stupefied. I'm like, why? Yeah. You know, this person has not done really much of anything as an elected official. That's what. Bob well, he's me. pissed off Disney. Yeah, I was going to say he wants the only thing that makes money down there is pissing off Alex. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and it's like great, great, smooth move, X Lax. You know, it's they, like they play how many people? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I'm like, really? That's, you know? Yeah, yeah. But some people say that he may not get reelected. That they're no, no, no. He's pissed off a lot of people here. Yeah, a lot of people with money who back, you know, and. And certainly, there's a whole contingent up in Orlando that won't vote, vote for him. Oh yeah, because he tr he's trying to kill the gate goose that laid their yeah. golden egg, right. you know. Yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, at one point, I I often said, if I were Disney, I would mm. just say, "Fuck you, we're leaving the state." I mean, they could build someplace else up. Oh, if they if they, up they up said we want to move somewhere yes. else. There'd be any one of a number of maybe 10, 15 states. Oh, they would line up those states, Georgia or something like that. Of states that would line up oh, and say, right. we'll actually pay you to come here. Much like Yeah, they probably would for all those jobs they're going to bring in yeah. here. Yeah. I think Tony's had coffee again. He's stepping all over Alex again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anybody else who's talking. 
Yeah, sorry, Alex. <laughs> are you are you are drinking coffee. I am. I was watching old movies and I heard you. You know when I I, I flipped over Gavin on my Roku and then when I heard you say Phil is a security uh, is a god, I almost fell off the couch. No, a bodyguard. And you said you had a bodyguard or something. Alex? No, I said he would make a good bodyguard. Really? I almost fell off the couch when I heard that. I said, "Come on, really?" Oh, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't. I don't. You uh, had a bodyguard, didn't you, Alex? Why I, had you a, tall? I had a bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. But they're usually tall guys, don't know. No, what you want? What I had in a bodyguard was a guy who knew how to not look like a bodyguard, and he always walked behind me, not next to me, not in any perception that. I had a bodyguard with me, but he was always right behind me, and he was, he was I think he was, he wasn't really tall, but he wasn't short either. He just looked like a normal guy who, if you oh, really? checked him out, was carrying a gun on him, you know, and uh, made sure that I was safe. If anybody came up and suddenly tried to hassle me in any way, shape, or form, we, we, had, a cl we had a whole thing where his the best thing he did for me as a bodyguard is if I was talking to somebody, somebody stopped me in a fan, you know, and I wanted to be nice. I didn't want anybody to go around saying, oh, that Alex Bennett, what an asshole. He wouldn't talk to me, right? So I would stop and talk to people. That's but nice. if they bent my ear too long and I suddenly yeah. decided I wanted to move on, I did this. Uh -huh. And immediately he would come over and say, Alex, you're needed over here. Okay, and get me out of this. Get me out of that particular situation. But you know, it, I, I needed it only because I, I had a couple of threatening situations in public events. At public events. Oh, yeah. Well, when you when you get all your pictures from Petaluma and you see the breakfast with Bennett's and you see some pictures and I show you that I was in the front row. Then I'll prove to you that you just blew me off a bunch of times. Did I really? Did I really? Get away from me. Well, you, you got to realize I'm a shy guy. That's part no, I think of. We were afraid of you. <laughs> You're so ruthless on the radio. <laughs> oh, I was. You know, off the radio, I was just. You, you know, I go to a party and I go over in the corner and sit by myself. You know, I was. I just was very shy. Uh, and and so what you may have perceived as being standoffish or whatever or being a prick was the fact that truthfully yeah. I am a prick and I'm just lying to you now about being shy. So, you know. Yeah. I want to see those pictures. I want to see those. Uh, you have pictures, right? And Petaluma still for, of, of the Breakfast with Bennett's? I don't know where, how many pictures I have. I, I, oh, yeah. I really, what I have to do, Damien, I, it's up at Damien's uh, uh, storage locker. Once I'm able to get out to California, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to start going through there, throw stuff out that I don't need. How many? We boxes? have a van. We have a van. Yeah, I was just going to say <laughs> yeah, we, we have, have a van. van. How many boxes? We got to take out the bed, though. <laughs> we need more storage. <laughs> and, and you know, I mean, I, I I will look for pictures. I usually always look for pictures, but I think I've got. I a can lot drop them at Brian's house. He's got room in the garage. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hey, listen, I just looked at the clock. It's almost time for me to ramp up the theme here, which none of you will hear <laughs> because uh, I play it silently and selfishly for my own entertainment. But let's let's start it anyway. There's the theme. Hey, listen, this has been a, this has been a really nice hour. It's been a lot of just a lot of fun and casual and, and the easy. Cowboys even won. Yeah, I just, they <laughs> snuck by. See the I message you. <laughs> they, my series said they snuck by. They snuck by. So that you're yep. happy the Cowboys won tonight. Are you happy, Charlie? Yeah. This, and I, I and I'm happy. Yeah. I had Dak in my fantasy football, so he did good for me tonight. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, none of these teams have Taylor Swift's boyfriend, do they? Uh, I got Kelsey on my oh. team, and he's too busy all over the place with this one. Yeah. He's, I'm losing. he's too busy getting hand jobs from Taylor Swift. I mean, geez, anyway. uh, hey, listen, thank you to Charlie. Always good to have you here. Resistance is not futile. <laughs> and then what does that say? That's it says, Ohm. Both is divided by uh, current. Oh, I see. Okay. That's resistance. So it's not futile. And of course, we've got uh, we've got uh, uh, our car fan here, uh, Brian, for being with us. Thank you, Brian. Thank you to uh, our good friend uh, 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 Alan and Mark. You know, you got to do this more often. 
I really love it's having my, you here. It's my work schedule, Alex. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, well, when don't you work, and we'll just do the show then, okay? No, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Stein, thank you for being with us tonight. And, Charlie, and uh, uh, Tony, thanks for calling late because you, you then didn't interrupt too much because you had too much coffee. Mm-hmm. You know. I'm going to be up at three now. What? TV. What? I see I'm late watching old movies now. I oh, okay. Something. We'll go watch some old movies. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye. I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. There they go. That's our citizen panel. They were a good one tonight. Really good one tonight. And uh, let me just uh, say goodbye to them here. There we go. Hey, listen. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, of course, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.